not that dizzy. Oh, it's, it's Genshin! Lucas the Edge. Wait. It's Genshin again. But is he like... Oh, he's, he's like a demon Den Go Genshin now. Also, I don't get that line. Go back to hell. We're already We're, in hell. We are in hell. <laughs> well, look, look, Lucas, you didn't think the Edge could get any... No, I didn't. Now. He's gone edgier. The really thing is that I really like this fight because they remix all of his moves with hell magic. And now he throws, like, fire shurikens <laughs> and all that cool shit. Do you know what the problem is, though, Lucas? He's still not scary because he has the exact same weakness as the original one, which is oh. massive wide open moments where you can just do, like, a third of his health in one combo. <laughs> right, look at that. This is supposed Jesus. to be the final showdown between the fate of Dragon Ninja and, like, his sworn enemy. He's already, like, two-thirds of his health gone. <laughs> Oh! Like, yeah! I saw that. I'm like, okay, I will that's say that. a bit better. Do you know why? Because that did like maximum fucking damage. Yeah. So that is the ultimate Izuna drop. And spoilers, I get the ability to do that. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, oh God! Damage. That does insane damage. So that's like his only threatening move that he has. Because if you haven't got full health, it'll kill you instantly. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, Genshin. Not really much of a threat. There we go. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> How long did that... It took me longer to kill some fish. <laughs> the fish outside were more of a threat than Genshin. They literally were. He's, he's the best enemy because he's so easy to beat when you figure out what his patterns are. Which I guess is rewarding you learning his patterns. It is, yeah. But it, it makes it really sad that... He's so powerful, and the, literally, a lake full of fish did more damage to me. <laughs> I have staked my name. I have fought with all of my... See, that's the sad part. That's him trying. Yeah. That's what makes it so that's sad. That's him he trying tried. and being powered up by demon powers. And he's still lost in like 40 seconds. You have no regrets. You're dead, your entire clan's wasted, and the earth might get destroyed. So too have I. Dragon Ninja, take my cursed blade. Of course. Like, you've defeated me five times. Take my blade. You've earned it. I, I would love at this moment you had the option to say, nah. <laughs> Shit. It's a good weapon. I just think it's really hilarious that he's still not a threat. Even when he's fully powered up, because all you need to do is dodge literally once and then press Y three times. And you take a third of his health off. It just reminds me of it's like, oh, uh, Vegeta's not strong enough. Oh, I'll take these demon powers from Babidi. Oh, he's still, he's still not, not strong enough. I was like, God damn it, Vegeta, you wasted it. Yeah! Yes. Look at his screenshot. So this is why this moment's actually difficult, because you have to do two bosses in a row. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so let's read the description of this. Uh, when the dragon sword and the blade of the arch fiend are wielded together, the enormity of their combined ancient power is immeasurable. Although the cursed <laughs> blade of the arch fiend has been described in legend since antiquity, the circumstances of its origin are unknown. One prevailing theory is just that the blade was forged from the molten remains of an iron meteorite that had been breathed upon by the arch fiend. And the arch fiend's evil magic that is trapped inside the sword reacts to the power of the wielder. Sparks run up and down the length of the blade. The description on the blade's surface is written in divine characters that are incomprehensible to humans. One interpretation of the meaning reads as thus. Praise be the order brought forth by the very edge of chaos. The blade of the arch fiend has been passed down through the generation of the most ruthless and powerful members of the black spider clan was the favoured weapon of their leader, the ninja overlord, Genshin. So this is the singular most powerful weapon in the entire game. Um, you now have access to level 4 moves, which include the Underworld Drop, which is the combination of Genshin's ultimate drop kick, Joey's big throw that he did to me, oh, yeah. and the Izuna Drop. Oh man, that sounds so awesome. So you wield both weapons at once with the ultimate throw. The problem is you don't fight a single human-sized opponent for the rest of the game. That's exactly what I was going to ask. So the coolest move in the entire game is one you cannot do until your second playthrough. Also, it's terrible against Elizabeth, so we're not going to use it to fight her <laughs> and go straight back to this because I want the damage. Because what? So this bit That's can the be really annoying thing is because I bet most people will have gone, you, oh, you've just got that sword. I'll use it's that. It's so powerful. Like, it's got a few good attacks, like... Um, 
The problem is just they're nothing compared to the uh, the Eclipse Sight. The Eclipse Sight is too good. Just because it's a tax breaker, the guards of the enemy. Mm -hmm. And this bit can be quite difficult just for the fact that it's the only time in the game we have to fight one boss straight after another one. And if you die during this fight, it doesn't put you back at the beginning of the Genshin fight, which you're back at the beginning of this one, which I contend is more difficult because if you have no healing items and you use them in the fight with Genshin, you have no healing items for this fight. Oh, and she steals your life as well, doesn't she? She does, yeah. So she's a much harder fight, and I would prefer to fight her first. Oh, for sure, yeah. Because not to mention as well, like, if you don't know this fight's coming up, and every boss fight in the game so far has been, oh, use all your healing items. Be like, yeah, because hey, you uh, could just put everything into the Genshin fight and then be like, not realizing. Nothing. But you can just see that the Eclipse side is just. Look That's at it. It's just tearing her apart. It's the best weapon in the game. Like, it doesn't do as much damage in some regards, but, like, you can't just argue with just the power of just. So, the thing is, the, the, um, the two swords might be able to do the ultimate drop. But, but they work, can't right? do the just sheer damage of the scythe. They can if you do certain attacks. Like they do have two very good. We didn't attacks, use those swords, really. No, we didn't. No. Like they are incredibly powerful. If I can show off the attacks, mm. yeah, heart of crimson blood. So there's a few attacks they have like this, the Y attacks. The problem is because they're not heavy weapons. Uh, because she's a demon, she can just like block all those attacks. Whereas with the Eclipse scythe. Um, the second and third attacks are pretty much guaranteed. Mm -hmm. So you're always getting like at least like 25% damage. Oh, poor Genji. What a fucking loser. But you know what, though? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'll show him what's up. Right, let's leave. What just a pathetic enemy. got fucking rainbow portal on the go over here. <laughs> yeah. Look, 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 like party portal. Right here. Yeah. Get into the club. Yeah. Let's leave. Oh my god, what? Yeah. Why are we just yeah. in it? You know what? I don't, I'm not going to question it anymore. No. So it's the uh, the final final area. This makes just as much sense as saying as everything like, else in the game. Oh, yeah. we went from New York to Russia or wherever it was. I use one healing item. So defeating the two most powerful like greater fiends um, took less effort than fighting some fish. Just keep. Oh my god, that door. That's what makes it so funny because it's <laughs> so so easy to beat. Oh! Oh man. That's right. We've opened I up the worthy. sacred realm. I'm worthy. Let's go fight Mundus. <laughs> oh. Seems too angelic for like an underworld, an underworld um, uh, door. But I do think one of my. a trope that I quite like, as cheap as it is, is the. oh. The deeper you get into hell, the more angelic things start to look. Mm -hmm. Because obviously, the original demon, Lucifer, is a fallen angel, so it does make sense. It does, yeah. So, now we've oh got God, the, party mode. the problem of... Yeah. So, look, you don't fight any human-sized enemies. So, the two, the coolest new move you unlock with you this set move. of weapons can't even be used. Thankfully, because it's just the amount of damage it does is so ridiculous. Hmm. It does turn most base enemies um, into just a piece of piss to kill. Like, it decapitates on almost every single straight hit. <laughs> and then, I'll, just as you imagine, become fodder. Do you get a, do you get a new um, ultimate attack? I'm pretty sure you do. Uh, I'm not sure. But it's called Eight Heavenly Dragons. So that sounds quite scary. <laughs> uh, yeah, there we go. The other um, super scary attack you get is this one. That la and that last slash there, that cross slash, is unstoppable. All oh, right, okay. nothing, nothing stands up to it because it's just like. So as you can see, it's a pretty decent boss weapon. Yeah. But you're not, you're not going to see the underworld drop, and that's a real shame. Because <laughs> it's so fucking awesome. Because it's the, the ultimate combination of Ryu Hayabusa, like the Black Spider Clan combination fight. That is a bit of a shame. Do you think the first thing they do is give you a couple just to show it off? Yep. And isn't that weird how the coolest, most badass, like the last thing you will lock in the game, you will never see? It's really weird. Like, I get oh. these games are designed to be played over and over. 
But, yeah, why lock your best move behind essentially putting it in New Game Plus? Also, as well, that cutscene's gonna last longer than the fight with him. <laughs> Guaranteed. Still, you for blood. And here's where you find out, though, the actual. Uh, oh. It must have yeah. More! So that's why he's sending enemies at me. He needs a blood sacrifice. Oh. As Ryu is unwittingly providing. Just by, like, you know, just wrecking the shit. I'm not gonna lie, we're providing quite a lot of blood. Just that, that staircase alone. Yeah. <laughs> and this is why I feel like they should have put that staircase. They should have put it here. When you've got all your weapons. That would have been cool. graded. And it's just, oh, now you have the blade of the... And as well, the blade of the Arch Fiend is perfect for fighting, like, human-sized enemies. You get the new moves, you get the new underworld drop. Mm -hmm. And your Izuna drop's super powerful. And they send, like, oh, it's just... These big, weird, dumb things that Arthur's fight. Like, that's where... The um, the infinite ninja staircase should have been. Yeah, yeah. Just imagine getting to the top of that, and then it's the final boss fight. You'd feel like such a boss, wouldn't you? Right. It's a bit of a shame that we're not getting called Jaguar Ninja. I'm not going to lie. It should be. Legendary Jaguar Ninja. Oh, and guess what, Lucas, I'm going to do the moment this fight starts. Uh, kill him. Nope. Switch away from the Blade of the Arch Fiend. To the Eclipse side. Because this... Uh, yep. Yeah, because this enemy... As cool as he looks, does potentially the worst thing an enemy can do in a character action game, which is float just ever so slightly above the arena <laughs> in a place where you can't hit him with any moves. Great. Thankfully, there is a move that can hit him, and it is... Where'd all his demons go? If you, oh, he killed them all. They're all dead. So you see how he's just floating yeah. just above? The, and the only attack I've found that can hit him consistently even though I'm not hitting him right now, is that Eclipse Scythe one, just because it swings above Ryu. What are you meant to do, like, fire at him? No, he comes down to the ground every now and again. It's just like you can get, like, cheeky hits on him here, early. So you're not supposed to actually be able to hit him while he's up there, but uh, with the Eclipse Scythe, yeah. you can. It's just a shame that, like, oh yeah, the final level boss... What does he do for most of the fight? Oh, he floats just above you in a place we can't hit him. Yeah. And the best but, way to beat him is just to just do this over and over again. I think most, like, bosses in character action games that people talk about being great... They're always... It's the same... It's a, an opponent who can do everything you can do. Yeah, That's why it's Virgil's always, the best like, fight. the one-on-one -on -one fight with a similar opponent. The way I've heard it put is, you know a boss fight's going to be good if you stand still at the start of it, and they walk towards you slowly. Yeah, yeah. It's the only, it's the best way to start. But yeah, so much for the Arch Fiend. The legendary Arch Fiend <laughs> killed by a man. Luke, I'm doing Just your favourite tactic. Twirling. Twirling. Twirling towards victory. What also makes it super annoying though is that he seems like he's going to be using all of the abilities of all the great fiends. So when he starts throwing the lightning bolts, I'm like, oh, he's going to use Alexi's attacks. He's going to use Elizabeth's attacks. And then yeah. he just uses the lightning. Yeah. So they don't even do that. Also, that design is a lot better than his just creepy old man. Yeah. But wouldn't it have been cool if like, each one of his tentacles had like, like a different element? Fiends. And then you, you have a, a little cutscene, Joe, like your Ryu cutscene of cutting one off, and then he loses access to that power. Mm, yeah, yeah. So he's dead. So Great. maybe if someone wants to double check the time. Did I kill him quicker than he actually spent on screen? <laughs> he had more screen time in cutscene shit talking me than he did getting killed. Yeah! Big dumb zombie! Rah! Big dumb zombie! Bye! Oh wow. Hello Satan! So isn't this like the first shit mode as well of him? Uh, yes, this is his basic bitch mode. Oh, no, he's running away. Right, so, uh, I'm going to now ask you a question, Lucas, right? I have got all these super sick, awesome weapons, right? Okay. I've got all these awesome weapons. I've got, like, the Blade of the Arch Fiend. I've got the Gurion Flail, the Ton for the Kurisigama, the Falcon thing. I've got the Eclipse Scythe, bathed in the blood of a million screaming humans. Do you want to guess what weapon it is you have to use to beat the very final boss? If you said you use bow and arrows and you don't actually get to fight him properly, you were correct, my friend. Oh, no. The final boss of this awesome character action game, built 
literally built around doing cool shit with awesome weapons is you shoot him with a bow and arrow. How fucking lame is that? That's fucking awful. It's the it's so lame. And it gets even better because the final over boss, of course, has a very easily exploitable pattern. Of course. That until you learn it is infuriating, but once you do, makes him a piece of piss. Oh, the Napa Cannon. So here's how you beat the final boss. Shoot him once in the head. Oh, I missed the head. Dodge. So you shoot him once in the head with a fully charged bow and arrow. Oh, I missed again, fuck's sake. Once in the head, you dodge twice, so you don't get hit by those. Shoot him in the glowing orb. That's it. Dodge twice. Always dodge twice. Shoot him in the head. So, in the head with a bow and arrow. Dodge twice, so you don't get hit by those. Charge up a full shot. Hit him in the orb. Dodge twice. Fully charge. Hit him in the face. Dodge twice. Always dodge twice, otherwise you get hit by that. Fully charge. So otherwise you get hit by those bodies, but I've got enough health. He's dead. That's phase one. Wait, what? That's, that's phase one? That's phase one. What? You stand in your block. So that tail can hit you. Doesn't do a lot of damage, but there are moments I have been killed by that before. Do you want to get those arrows? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, those arrows, yeah. You can do it with like all 30, you don't need them. Oh yeah, but just in case. Yeah, and then you do a little bit of bad platforming. Yeah. And if you're wondering, oh, God, folks at home, is there anything else you can do? No other weapon hurts him. You can hit him with Nimpo, um, but because he moves around a lot and he only has that very specific weak point, it's really not worth throwing the Nimpo out for anything other than to, uh, as it's like, a last second just, oh god, I'm going to get hit by that cloud of viscera that he spits out when he gets hit. So Lucas, thoughts on the final boss of Ninja Gaiden? I thought it was going to be super high. Oh yeah. And I've gone the wrong way, sorry. Not um, that. Um, I, I, I cannot under, like, understate how fucking lame this final fight is. It's very difficult up until you learn that pattern. And that pattern never deviates. I thought it's it was going to be high car. Shoot him with one arrow, dodge twice. It's always dodge twice. Because if you dodge once, he hits you. If you dodge three times, you don't have enough time to charge him with arrow. Oh, uh, you happened? can shoot um, some fish. He's got like variations of that that can hit you. All it really does is just throw you off a little bit. Not really that much. Of it. Oh so my he's god! Throwing those skulls. So dodge the skulls. So this is where it can get a bit difficult. But the only thing you really need to learn is just you've just got to be brave. That's the main lesson. Yeah, yeah. Because that's the thing I, uh, that people struggle with. It's like, oh no, when do I have my option to charge up? It's like just keep keep it. Um, dodging and will. We'll... And you know as well, even if he's going to swing at you, you can get away with it because if you hit him before he lands his attack, it'll stun him. Yeah, and even when he drops his face down, look. It's weird that um, of all enemies that get stunned done. by a hit, it's this boss and not normal enemies. There are like enemies with that, more super armor than this final boss. Yeah, like the enemies, I, those fish are harder to kill. I'm not kidding when I say that those fish are some of the hardest enemies in the game. Because they're the only ones that you can't stun with weapon attacks or anything like that. You can go under the water with a fully level, with the um, Arch Fiend Blade, do like the underwater heavy attack, it does no damage. Oh wow. <laughs> like this guy gets stunned by a fucking bow and arrow. Yeah. A bow and arrow, and the arrows are ones I'm picking up off the floor. They're not even special arrows. Like, he doesn't even, like, have, like, um, oh, we're going to infuse the arrows with, like, reused latent power, and you fire, like, laser beams or something. You're firing, like, like true dragon arrows or something. No, I'm like firing that. pieces of wood with a stick on it. Like, I'm wielding the Eclipse Scythe, and it does less damage than hitting with an arrow. Because that's what always makes sense, for example, uh, in Zelda games, where it's like... Yeah, because you get oh, the light arrows. Well, yeah, you, you, kill, you kill Ganon... Often with a bow and arrow, but it's the special light arrows that will destroy him. Oh, he got me. So, he got me there, but that's because I didn't charge up quick enough. And this is where it gets annoying, where it's just... Oh, I missed. That's annoying. Ugh. Right, I need to pee. Oh, okay, so I'm back, Lucas. Uh, while I'm in this option, just give myself a little bit of health. Right? <laughs> and this is the only real threat that the final boss poses, and it is... If you get stuck in one of these really annoying patterns where it's just you just don't have time to draw the arrow 
Yeah, it doesn't seem to be giving you the Or if you miss, time. like I just did then. But otherwise, it is of no real threat. You can even get all your health back by doing that. Because like, moments like that. that are really annoying. Yeah, because they, like, you can't see them because they come from the top of the screen. And you can get s not stun locked, but like stuck in a very, very frustrating pattern of yeah. just getting hit by this bullshit that literally comes from off screen because it comes from above where you can spawn. <sighs> I'm just gonna take a second. Okay. Right, here we go. Take your time. Reset his, re reset his pattern. He just seems to be throwing out his um, limb attacks a lot more than he ordinarily would. Yeah, yeah. Which was throwing me off, so. But I'll give him a second just to... Um, to calm down. Just to reset his pattern. There we go. Final boss defeated. Wow. What a f I did not think we'd finish this episode in an hour. No. So fucking lame. It, it's... It's such an unhyped moment. Is that genuinely it? Yeah, that's the final boss. He doesn't transform again or anything. Well, yeah, he does transform. But the final boss is just you spam all attacks. But how unhype is that? That is just... Oh, and God. it could be fixed if they just... like If the infinite ninja hallway, like the most memorable part of the entire game, was just before this fight, this ending would be super sick and hype. <laughs> because it would be, oh, you've got fully upgraded weapons, a fully upgraded Ryu, just go fucking ham. But it's essentially just been do four boss fights with, yeah. what, a couple of demons in between two and three? Well, as well, think about how, like, boring that final boss fight was. Like, the only struggle I had is when I was getting hit from the top of the screen by an enemy that was spawned. Like, you saw, like, the weird ghost fish or the weird skulls that come down. And you couldn't even see them until you got no. hit by them, essentially, because they come from too yet. far up. And all I needed to do was literally stand still for five seconds until his pattern reset. And then I could kill him easily. Yeah. Oh, God. And even on the Master Ninja rating, that's voted, like, regarded like one of the easiest bosses to beat. I mean... Because once you've got that pattern down, you can do it in 30 seconds. I'm not a, I not, just really, I'm I not just a big really fan needed, of this. <laughs> I just really, really need to pee, so I apologise, folks. <laughs> just, oh, one drop of blood. It's yeah, like, oh, I'm about how, more powerful than ever. Think about how powerful Ryu's blood is, though. I mean, I guess, but... Also, as well, why did Ryu not do that at any other point in the game? <laughs> Look how high I just jumped. So here's the true final boss. Okay. Do you want to know what the problem is, Lucas? Do you want to know how you beat him? Are you ready? So what weapon... Like, Blade of the Arch Fiend, why not? Do it. Show it, here's how, you beat it. here's how you beat him. Right, you don't do anything cool. You hit his hands with swords. Oh. This is it. This is the final fight. Hit his hands. This is it, Lucas. This is the final fight. Just slash at his hands. Just slash his hands. I mean, this is better than the bow bit. That's it. That's all he does. And then you just jump backwards and forwards for a few seconds. There we go. Okay. Then he stands here. And you can attack his feet if you want, but why would you? And all you do is you just wait for him to come back and then slash his hands a bit more. Oh, lightning. Yeah. You Did you just back. absorb that lightning? No, I just jumped above it. Oh, okay. Uh, it takes a while to realise, but if you just jump. So, the last bit is just a platforming section. I consider it. So as long as you jump, you don't take any damage there. Yeah. Uh, that moment can be really difficult if you try to do like the one weapon run to like, use like, like, the Tonfer. So you think, for example, the Tonfer. Oh, he's got me. Oh, no. Luke's, I'm dead. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. no. Ryu's back. He's back. Might he's as well use the Fuck it. Taste his feet. There we go. So let's go slash his hands. And here's what, where it gets frustrating now. Literally, the only time you can do damage is when he's like either here or his ankles are there. Mm -hmm. So you can either attack his ankles or his wrists. Uh, his patterns are random, so he can spend the entire match just doing this, which is hide very far away and pepper with the projectiles. Oh, God. Not fun, is I it? I presume it's just like RNG pattern based. Yeah. 
And if you get a bad pattern, like when I did it on mentor mode, I got him doing this for about four minutes. Oh it was God. fucking annoying. There we go. Slash his ankles. Do it. There we go. So that's that slash attack I talked about. There we go. The ankles need to know calm. You got slash his ankles. It's like okay, yeah, it's deadly. The like the ultimate arc, like the ultimate enemy, dies because Ryu slashes at his ankles and the wrists. <laughs> no, he teleported with the other look. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, Ninja Gaiden. Ten on ten. You spawn above the level, walking on air, <laughs> Lucas, walking on air. And you know what makes it even worse? That his attacks are just so fucking lame. Yeah. Like, he doesn't do anything I've not already seen before. Like, I thought, oh, at least he's combining them now. But nothing he does is interesting. He has no cool or unique moves besides the grab, which you can't see because the camera's fucking awful. <laughs> I do appreciate how it's combining the lightning with the fire. That's good, yeah. Like, like I say, it's a platforming section with a fight thrown in. It's just what I find annoying is... Oh god, that might kill, that might kill. Oh, dear god. So, Joe, it's time for Lucas. Yeah! Yes! Do it. Okay, so he's dead. So, what weapon should I kill him with? This is the final very... You get a unique um, special animation for every different weapon. So, what do you want to see me defeat the ultimate Lord of Evil with? I mean... It's your choice. I just feel like it has to be the MVP of the Eclipse Scythe. The, the Eclipse Scythe has been a little problem solved. It has been. So I feel I'm like sorry, we're doing King. it in injustice otherwise. There we go. So goodbye, King of Evil. Oh! I'll do like this now. Oh! Oh! It's the only cool moment of the fight. Oh, so yeah, there is a... Um, I invite people to go look up. Uh, How did Ryu get that one? All the different ones uh, that you do, because every single weapon gets a unique one. Yeah. And they're all super hype and cool. And they end with Ryu doing the um, like the charge ultimate attack to finish him. Because I did the one with my Kurisigama, because the Kurisigama carried me through mental mode. Mm -hmm. And the Kurisigama, like, Ryu just turns into this whirling maelstrom of knife and chains. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like, I want to. I want to. Pick a dumb weapon, but at the same time, the Eclipse Scythe has just gotten us through. It's been the little problem solver on it. Oh no. That so Sonya that has been on a journey considering she just wanted to come and see us in the shop. <laughs> we don't even know what she wanted to find us for. No. She never tells you. She wanted to find you so that she could be a plot device car. Yeah, pretty much. I still she don't understand what her role in that story was. She doesn't have one. Lucas, she's a female character. It's not even games. like we were there to really rescue her. No, she rescued us a lot of the time. But even when she was trapped in hell, I thought we might have a mission where it's like, oh no, like, we have to go and, and help. Well, I guess we did, didn't we? Yeah, but it was kind of just walked over. Uh, so, that is the end of the game. At least thoughts, I guess. I mean, apart from that really fucking awful last boss, it's a really good game. It is. And I'm going to reiterate what I've said multiple times. Um, if you want to play this game, I highly recommend it. Play it on easy, because on easy mode, you don't have to deal with a lot of the bullshit that I um, had to contend with in this playthrough. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, it's it's so fucking, the ending is so flaccid. It really is. It just takes all of the hype out of the game. Because it is just fight four level bosses in a row that are not fun. Yeah. And that they're not interesting. It, from like either a visual or a gameplay standpoint. Because they just look messy. They do, they do. They look they're, they're overdesigned. Over like that final really boss did not look interesting to me. No, it looks... It's so edgy. And because it has no lead up either. Yeah, like yeah. I said, uh, that Dagradai, the buddy priest guy, 
you find out about him like five minutes before you fight him. <laughs> I feel like that sums up a lot of this game, though. Is as cool as it is, it just jumps from point to point and has very little cohesiveness. Mm. It's an action game, isn't it? So it's just... Yeah, but you, you know, compared to like a Devil May Cry or Bayonetta, the world is a lot more realised. So we've got Josh Keaton. Yeah! Uh, really Rob Atkin down. Hope. There's a couple of other famous ones in there. Paul Iding. Steve Blues. Paul Iding is, uh, who's it now? Colonel Campbell. Oh, okay. Metal Gear Solid. There's a couple of famous ones there for you. I'm not sure if I recognise any of these Japanese names. There's probably a famous one in there too. I'm, I'm sure there is. Drunken Skeleton, performed by Tobinogo Itagaki. <laughs> so he's the producer and the director, and also the guy who got accused of like all these weird sex crimes. Oh, God, no. Yeah, so you can probably tell like, who really fought to get the inclusion of yeah. Sonya in the game. Well, like, there's a couple of things that you, you could have so easily like made the ending of that game hype, and because they show you the giant room full of demons, like with a million demons in there, and mm -hmm. like, I need more blood. And they have multiple points in the game, like where you fight all the werewolves, it's fight infinite werewolves, fight infinite ninjas. Yeah. It would have been really cool if it was just, oh, he sends every single one of those demons to fight you, and that hallway <laughs> just has like a million... I know it would have been annoying. It would have been frustrating as all hell. But it would have been but cooler final, than no effort. Yeah, but that final boss rush is already a ball leg if you don't know what you're doing. Mm. I probably made it look really easy because I killed up virtually everything in like a few seconds. Yeah. I think every boss fight took like 45 seconds except for uh, the parts where they fly away where I can't physically hit them. Mm -hmm. like, the first time through that took me about three hours. I can imagine. Just because... So you I don't even get like a shop think. in between or anything really. No, you just get given like one healing item. So. Oh no, because you got the shop in between like... Um, the two sets of double boss fights, but still. Yeah, the problem with the problem with that is though, it doesn't come after a, a moment where you'd have a lot of essence. Yeah. So yeah. I only had a lot of essence because I did all of the um, the trials. Remember, mm -hmm. I specifically got like the hundred and fifty thousand essence because I did that one trial. If you don't pick up the rod of trials, you don't get that. God. So conceivably, you could not have enough to do what I did, just fill up on everything. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a shame. The ending's just so flaccid. Not much happens. Yeah, and it, I'd say like I've enjoyed watching you play this game, but just that last bit where it's like, oh, okay, so you don't do a really cool fight. It's like no, you just spam move. No. Well, uh, as well, I didn't show it off because I had enough healing items to just brute force my way through. There's a place you can stand on the stage where the enemy can't hit you. Oh, cool. Like uh, if you stand next to his left hand. Where I was stood most of the time, but I thought, fuck it, I've got enough healing just dick around and get hit. Is he really going to leave like a godly weapon just in the middle of the field? Replace it amongst all his fallen clan, because that's where the clans would fight. I know, but like any fucker could just walk up and pick the, the blade of the Archfiend. But no one's going to, because it's evil and it'd hurt. And it's on a mountain controlled by Ryu, so. What I don't get, though, is why Ryu gives any sort of a shit about Genshin. He tried to destroy the world. And he tried to kill all of his family and clan. And, and succeeded for the like, most part. Injured his dad. Like, he's not a worthy opponent. But I guess it's just a thing of like um, giving him a warrior's end, I suppose. I guess. Like, Ryu has respect. All chapters completed. So 23 minutes. The final wow. boss rush where I fought four enemies in a row. 23 minutes. Master Ninja ranking. Of course. What did I get overall? Let's find out. So I believe you do get um, an entire thing. Oh no. Fuck you, Carl. No. <laughs> so I've got a Master Ninja ranking, but I don't know what I got overall. So I'm going to say, I'm going to give myself a B. No, you know what, Carl? Ninja. I'll give you a B plus, because nearly every stage you got Master Ninja rank. Except for the ones where I just bum rush through them because I didn't want to fight. But yeah, you know what? I'll let the audience decide. What ranking would you give me? <laughs> yeah, thank you for coming, folks. And oh, the annoying thing is I can't even show off the next game I'm going to do by doing the bullshit thing of, oh, let's go to my home screen and see what game's next because we're playing on a different console. Oh, do you know yeah. What game it is we're playing next I, I, I do, yeah. You do? Okay, do you want to tell the audience what it is? Do, do we want to tell them? That they that deserve one. to know, Carl. They do, yeah. Go on. They're sat through okay. that ending. Go. Well, provided that I'm correct, we are next playing through 
Transformers Devastation. Oh, Final Fantasy Transformers Devastation? Yeah. Fuck yeah. And I've never played this game space. or seen it, so I'm really so excited. Sick. So sick.